Hi, I am Dr. Sakim Mansoor and uh, today's topic is the spinal cord structure. As you know that uh, I am uh, doing with you at uh, this uh, channel learning and at the, the spinal cord and at discussion lecture rise and in a series of lectures, the first one was um, uploaded and that was external features and the morphology with various salsi. And uh, the second one was a very detailed and comprehensive discussion on the spinal nerve formation and anatomy and distribution everything and uh, which you people liked a lot and uh, I, I got the feedback and today's very important um, lecture the spinal cord internal structure uh, so of course you know when I take a transfer section of the spinal cord it has a central gray matter and a peripheral white matter central gray matter and a peripheral white matter so you see this is the central gray matter you see this is the shape of an edge or a butterfly shape and on the periphery this matter surrounding the gray matter peripheral matter this is the white matter right so this is the central canal in the center which contains the cerebrospinal fluid so uh, discussion of gray matter a little bit detail and uh, you know uh, gray matter is in the center i told you already it has uh, two symmetrical right and left halves this is the one half and this is the other half so these are connected to each other by a transverse band which is the gray tissue right these two bands connected by gray tissue so uh, this is the i told you it shaped the butterfly shaped and uh, this is the central canal as we move on uh, we will now study the divisions of the gray matter so this is the division is very simple dorsal horn and the lateral horn and the ventral horn so here it is this is you know uh, this is the ventral horn and this is the dorsal horn and this is the lateral horn. These are the three horns of the spinal cord gray matter, right? So first of all, we focus on the ventral horn. Yes, over here, right? So it is broad and of a rounded or quadrangular shape. Broad, rounded or quadrangular, which varies at various levels of the spinal cord section, like. Uh, it is different at the cervical level, then at the lumbar it's different, thoracic different, the sac different. Its posterior part is termed the base. Its posterior part. This is the posterior part of the ventral horn, this, and this is termed the base and the anterior part. This, this is the head. So this is the head of the ventral horn, and this is the um, you know, base of the ventral horn. So this is directed forwards and slightly lateral forwards and slightly lateral ventral horn so of course they contain predominantly motor nuclei so anterior horn is a motor one so it's found at all the levels we know that from the discussion of the spinal uh, uh, nerve that uh, this horn contributes to the formation of the uh, anterior root of the spinal nerve of course which is mainly motor and this is the dorsal horn you should see here so it receives and processes sensory input of course that is via the dorsal root which contains the dorsal root ganglion so the sensory uh, uh, input is coming from there into the dorsal horn and then it is processed over here this is also found at all the levels of the spinal cord right from uh, uh, it starts at the end with the spinal cord ends. It is directed backwards. Yes, it goes backwards and slightly laterally, right? Just opposite the ventral horn. And uh, the parts of the dorsal horn, the four parts, this is part of the dorsal horn is the, you see here, is the base. Then is the constricted part, the neck. Then is the head, the expanded part. And this is the apex. Right, it apex is capped by substantia gelatinosa. It's a nucleus of the dorsal horn. We are dis uh, going to discuss very soon this substantia gelatinosa as well. So these are the four parts of the dorsal horn. Again, I repeat, this is the, you know here, uh, the head. Then this is constricted part, neck, expanded part, 
uh, you know, um, head, and this is the apex, which is capped by substantia gelatinosa. So, uh, lateral horn is here. This is the lateral horn here and here. Um, this is the lateral part of the anterior column projects laterally as a triangular. This is the anterior column and its lateral part it projects laterally as a triangular field. This is the lateral horn and it extends from C8 or L1 to L2 spinal segments and from S2 to S4 segments. So it is found between the dorsal and ventral horns. So location is this is the ventral horn and this is the dorsal horn and it is situated between these two horns, the lateral horn here. This is the uh, situation. So this receives viscerosensory input. So you see the level, what they tell, the levels tell that uh, it is present where is there is a thracolumbar outflow to the sympathetic system from this level like C8 or L1 to L2 spinal segments and from S2 to S4 segments, right? So this is the level C8 to L1 or L2. This will be covering, of course, all the thoracic vertebra C8, T1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 6, and all till 12, and this L1 or L2, this is the level. So this was a brief discussion about the layout of the various portions of the and gray horn portions and now we move on to the next portion of the discussion and this is the uh, rex lemini what are they rex lemini you see this is the uh, structure and uh, here this side this is the lemini this uh, spinal cord gray matter is laminated in a thick section it is the layers the lemini which are from lamina 1 to lamina 10 this is one and then distributed like this i tell you uh, in a detailed manner very soon and uh, this is right and they start from dorsal lamina one is present uh, dorsally and this is see till uh, nine it comes here to the ventral horn and this is the lamina 10 at the uh, this great uh, question central great question so rex lemini they were described by the swedish neuroanatomist b rex this was name of the scientist, Swedish neuroscientist, P. Rex. He described this. Uh, this, is, this is a variation in some books. Uh, some books interpret it differently, and in some books differently. I have to one of very universally uh, accepted and discussed in, in good reference books with you. Um, and uh, this is what is Rex Lemon? This is an architectural classification of the structure of the spinal cord based on the cytological features of the neurons in different regions of the gray substance. So it tells us that in the different regions of the spinal cord, the types of the cells is different and uh, their uh, function structure is different. So they are grouped together in that lemony. The, the lemony is named according to the um, that, uh, cells of the, the type of the uh, cell. So, of course, I told you 10 lemony and expressed in Roman numerals 1 to 10. Roman numerals. Either. So, lemony 1 to 9 extend through the cord, roughly paralleling the dorsal and the ventral columns of the gray substance. Right. This is the lemony 1. So, 1 to 6. You see, already even here you can focus 1 to 6 here in the dorsal one. And this is the seventh in the lateral, and uh, this is the two one and ninth, and the tenth, ninth and the tenth in the uh, this uh, ventral one. And this is the tenth one, and this is in the I already told you. This is see in the great mission, central great mission. So I told you already, right? So it contains the substantia gelatinosa centrals, right? So this is the thing, and this is the gap of the this posterior, posterior horn was. A substantia gelatinosa of Rolando. So, uh, a difference in the uh, nomenclature. We'll again tell you again. So, again, this is the summary Rex layers 1 to 6, 1 to 6 in the dorsal horn, right? 1 to 6 in the dorsal horn. And Rex layer 8 and 9, this 8 and 9, this 
or in the lateral horn, ventral horn, sorry. So again, I repeat, Rex layers one to six in the dorsal horn. One to six, this is the dorsal horn, and one to six over here. Rex layer seven to nine in the ventral horn. 38 to nine, this is in the ventral horn, right? This is the ventral horn. You see, I, I enlarge this picture for you, okay? So let me enlarge, maybe it's uh, ambiguous. Let's uh, enlarge it. Yes, here it goes, right? So eight to nine, which you see, just it is labeled over here, right? So this is, uh, you know, uh, uh, this is the nine and the ten. This is this is a ventral horn, and this is a lateral seven and one two, uh, you know, six. They are in the dorsal. This is the dream. So this is you can see it yourself. So as we move uh, ahead, and uh, this is a few words about the cavity of the spinal cord. The cavity of the spinal cord, which is known the uh, central canal, right? This is the central canal. So it's a narrow canal just visible to the naked eye, which traverses the entire length of the spinal cord. It is continuous above with the fourth ventricle of the hind brain, right? Above, it is continuous with the fourth ventricle of the hind brain. It extends below for five to six centimeters in the phylum terminal. In the lower part of the conus medullaris, it presents a small fusiform dilatation, which is known as the terminal ventricle. Then the uh, central canal, I told you, filled with the cerebrospinal fluid in the living and lined by a ciliated columnar epithelium, which is termed as the ependyma. Outside the ependyma is a circular zone of gelatinous substance called the substantia gelatinosa centralis. I have already told you, right? And it consists mainly of neuroglia and a few nerve cell and fibers. The canal is placed more anteriorly in the cervical and thoracic regions, more anteriorly in the cervical and thoracic region near the middle in the lumbar region, near the middle and posterior in the corner sweaters. So uh, this is the position, uh, it goes from anterior to posterior, it's here from above to downwards. So nerve cell columns, very, very important, the nerve cell columns. So gray matter consists of nerve cells and fibers, neuroglia, blood vessels, and the nerve cell is forming the chief component, right? So nerve cell types, right? They are, first of all, according to the length of the axon. They are Golgi type 1 and Golgi type 2 cells. Golgi type 1 and Golgi type 2. So what are the Golgi type 1 cells? And uh, their axons are long, which pass into the white matter to constitute fibers of the ventral roots of the spinal nerves, ascending tracts, white matter, and the visceral fibers. They are the long axons, like and uh, here in the spinal cord. And uh, the Golgi type 2 cells, axons of these cells do not pass out of the gray matter. They are formed two groups, intrasegmental neurons. Intrasegmental, their axons remain confined to the same segment. They form internuncial neurons, internuncial neurons in the spinal reflex arc system. They form internuncial neurons in the spinal reflex arch system. We'll, uh, uh, some way, uh, uh, some other will study this, but it's arch system, the reflex, reflex arch system, and everything. So uh, the intersegmental neurons, they were the intrasegmental neurons, right? They were confined to the same segment. They were intrasegmental. Then the intersegmental neurons, their axons pass through the gray matter from one segment to the other, right? They serve to link adjacent segments of the spinal cord from one segment to other segment. They provide a linkage. So uh, then we'll go on uh, and uh, we'll see that uh, various nerve cell groups, nerve cell groups. So it's just very simple as well, right? So you see already these are the lamina, and this is the corresponding uh, nerve cell groups, right? And I've been each and every horn. According to that, this is the dorsal horn, I'll tell you that. And this is the ventral, um, and this is the lateral, this is dorsal, lateral, and this is the ventral one, and this is the 
uh, you know, create commission. So they would be discussed in each and every detail separately. So first of all, the anterior gray column cells. This is anterior gray column cell. Just here you see. Though the lemony numbering is uh, start from more dorsally, but uh, as we are following this, first we are discussing the anterior column. So we'll start the anterior column discussing these cells um, which are present here. And uh, this is according to uh, how the lemony of Rex are related to them. So anterior gray column cells, which are the lemony H29, right? So these form lower motor neurons in contrast to upper motor neurons whose cell bodies are in the various gray matter area of the brain. They are large multipolar cells whose exons form ventral roots of the spinal nerves and the supply skeletal muscles. So these are the multipolar cells. And then is the uh, it's also it contains various of, of cells. First cell we have uh, discussing is the spinal border cells, the Cooper Shillington border cells, which is the Rex lamina eight, right? Rex lamina eight. So this is the Rex lamina eight. This is the, this is the uh, border cells of Cooper Shillington. Of course, discovered by and uh, first described by these uh, scientists. So their extent is from L2 to S3. They subserve unconscious proprioception from Golgi tendon organs and muscle spindles. And the tract which arises from their takes origin is the ventral spinocerebellar tract. Then is the sacral parasympathetic nucleus, which is the Rex lamina 8. All right, so Rex lamina 8, you, you see here, this is the 8th lamina. This discussion, discussion of the anterior horn cells going on, and its extent is from S2 to S3 and S4. It gives rise to preganglionic parasympathetic fibers that innervate the pelvic viscera via the pelvic nerves, right? And next, somatic motor nuclei, Rex lamina 9. This is the lamina 9, so the somatic motor nuclei. They are present at all levels. This is present at all levels, the somatic motor nuclei, and innervate the striated muscles. So the spinal accessory nucleus, very important, spinal accessory nucleus, Rex lamina 9. So uh, this is the Rex lamina, you know, 9. You see here, this is the 9. And its extent is from C1 to C6 right and gives origin to the spinal root of the spinal accessory nerve it provides a nerve supply to the trapezius and sternocleidomastoid muscles this you already know and uh, phrenic nucleus right so this is the rex lamina 9 again this is the lamina 9 over here yes this and this also contains the phrenic nucleus extent is from c3 to c6 it innervates the diaphragm so uh, these were the various cells i told you already this is this is um, um, describing with you right here and uh, you see like the phrenic uh, uh, enumerated and uh, this mansion specifically in the slide spinal accessory somatic motor sacral parasympathetic and the spinal border cell and uh, these cells uh, you see are uh, grouped here uh, anteriorly in three groups which is the lateral group the central group and the medial group. So I am going to describe with you right now the what nuclei are present in the you know here medial group, the central group, and the lateral group respectively. So let's discuss anterior gray column cells and the three columnar groups: Rex lamina eight to nine. These are the various, various lamina, right? So we are going on. These are the three groups. They present in the column of cells, these are the three column of cells, this is the medial, this is the central and this is the lateral group. And you already uh, make into your mind so that uh, if this is, uh, this is the medial one, so it contains the uh, all right, three types of cells and uh, this is the uh, central, also this is the two and I, I tell you accordingly, this is the medial group, right, first of all we discuss the medial group and GDA gray column cells, the X lamina in this and the medial group. This is the medial group. 
and it supplies muscles of the trunk. And this medial one is subdivided into two groups. From this, this is like use this, and you can divide uh, with like this line. And anteriorly is lying the anterior medial group, anterior medial group, and posteriorly is lying the posterior medial group. So this anterior medial supplies the muscles of the back, and the posterior medial supplies the anterolateral group of trunk muscles, right? So then the lateral group. This is the lateral group which is supplies muscle of the limbs and so are present in the cervical and the lumbar enlargements. It is subdivided into three groups in each enlargement, the cervical enlargement and the lumbar enlargement. So the lateral group is divided into uh, three subgroups, lateral group. What are they? So first of all is the anterolateral, anteriorly is the, this is the lateral groups and this, uh, anteriorly, this is the lateral side, anterolateral, right? In the cervical enlargement supplies the shoulder and the arm muscles. And in the lumbar enlargement, it supplies hip and thigh muscles, right? This was the first group. And as we go uh, here in the central group, right, posterior to the anterolateral, this is the posterolateral group. Here is the postulatory. What is that? First, number A is the cervical enlargement supplies forearm muscles. And in lumbar enlargement supplies the leg muscles. Here, this is the your the postulatory. So, first of all, uh, here was the in the lateral group, anterior one was the anterolateral. Posterior to the that was the uh, postulatory. And more. Uh, posteriorly, posterior most over here on the lateral one group is the posterior posterolateral. One can say dorsal posterolateral. So, uh, in the cervical enlargement supplies hand muscles, like the hand muscles, and in lumbar enlargement supplies foot muscles, right? This is important. And uh, now, uh, what is left? This is over here. This is the central group, right? Uh, this is described in some cervical and lumbosacral segments. Cervical, what uh, is the uh, position? What is the contents at the cervical level? Uh, C3 to C7, spinal segments of phrenic nucleus. Okay, this is identified which supplies the diaphragm, right? Central group. So this is the, uh, you know, so spinal, this is the spinal segments, the phrenic nucleus. And then is the lumbosacral L2 uh, S1 spinal segments. The distribution of its axons is not known. And the third one is the spinal accessory nucleus, right? Which C1 to C6 give rise to the spinal accessory nerve. So these are three mentioned, and this phrenic nucleus and the spinal accessory nerve nucleus. These are the main nuclei present over here. So this, this is the discussion over here, right? So you repeat, this is the medial group, right? It's three and I told you already, right? This was the mansion over here, see, right? You can go back and uh, you see, this is the medial group, anteromedial and posteromedial. You see the large picture, this medial contains anteromedial and the posteromedial, right? Again, you see, this is the anterior group, and this is the medial group contains the anteromedial and the posteromedial. So the likewise if they complete, this is the central group discussed with you already and this is the lateral group it also divided into uh, three uh, portions of nuclei. So a uh, few words about the Rensha cells. Rensha cell. This is the Rensha cell, the typical Rensha cell. What is this? This is an inhibitory interneuron present in the gray matter. These are small oval cells, 12 to 15 micron in diameter whose axons pass through ventral roots to supply intrafusal fibers of the neuromuscular spindles responsible for muscle tone. So their action represents a negative feedback mechanism. You see, this, this is the alpha motor neuron. Uh, so whose uh, contraction uh, is, uh, whose uh, firing and um, nerve imp impulse goes to the muscle and uh, the muscle contracts. And to keep this in check, uh, this uh, Rensha cell uh, is responsible. So let's see how. So it has uh, uh, two ways to associate with the alpha motor neuron Rensha cell. It first of all receives an excitatory collateral, right? You see, this is the alpha motor neuron. 
this is the venture cell right and this is the uh, you know alpha motor neuron exon going into of course anteriorly uh, to the anterior uh, um, root and which is of course motor and there is a um, uh, going a collateral this is a collateral of alpha motor neuron this is would be the stimulatory going to the ranch cell right the excitatory collateral right this so it uh, you know emerge from the anterior root and are thus getting information of the firing in density of that neuron and then this neuron this this inhibitory exon this was the collateral was excitatory and this is an inhibitory exon this synapses with the cell body of the initial alpha neuron and or alpha motor neuron of the same motor right this over here so this is a negative one ultimately stops and keeps it is check and balance this is the negative feedback so uh yeah, the word alpha motor neurons innervate skeletal muscles the extra fusion muscle and the gamma motor neurons innervate muscle spindle the interfusal fibers so moving on to the posterior gray column cells that uh, dorsal marginal nucleus we will discuss the nuclei right so dorsal what are they put as a dor this is the dorsal marginal nucleus this is the x lamina one right over here so associated with pain temperature and light touch sensation dorsal marginal nucleus so this is even posterior to substantia gelatinosa one site of origin of ventral and lateral spinothalamic tracts so origin of the ventral and lateral spinothalamic tracts from this dorsal marginal nucleus rex lamina 1 so it is identified from the substantia gelatinosa by the larger size of cells size that is larger than the this substantia gelatinosa substantia gelatinosa force is the lamina 2 this is substantia gelatinosa of the rolando and as this was in the lamina 10 the central gray cluster it was a substantia gelatinosa centralis so this uh, substantia gelatinosa here of rolando present at all core levels located at the apex of the dorsal horn chiefly small colgi type 2 Neurons homologous to the spinal trigeminal nucleus. It is homologous to the spinal trigeminal nucleus, and it is associated with pain, temperature, and light touch. Pain, temperature, and light touch sensation. It integrates input for ventral and lateral spinothalamic tracts. This is the anterolateral system, ventral and lateral spinothalamic tracts. Then is the nucleus proprius. third one this is the main nucleus the chief nucleus larger one the magnocellular nucleus right this is the rex lamina 3 and 4 you can identify them that 3 and 4 so the present at all core levels right and uh, chief nucleus and the central position in the main part of the dorsal horn this is in the center this is a nucleus proprius you yes, you see here this and um, some of cells are interneuron some of the cells of the nucleus proprius are interneuron others are the tract cells whose exons contribute to the ascending tracts formation in the uh, white matter pain temperature and light touch sensation are associated with nucleus proprius the ventral and lateral spinothalamic tract originate here ventral and lateral spinothalamic tracts part of it so rex lamina Five and six, five and six, right? So five. This is the diffuse spinal or reticular nucleus. Extent is the entire cord. This is present in the entire cord, and present in the neck. This, this is the location, neck of the dorsal, right? So the rex lamina five over here, and these are forming the interneurons for spinal reflexes, and its extent is. limb enlargement right cervical and the lumbar enlargement and present in the base of the dorsal horn right so these 5 and 6 present respectively at the neck of and the uh, you know you see this 5 and 6 near the neck the 5 and the rex lamina 6 uh, is the uh, you know at the uh, you know uh, base right this is this is the base and this is the 
uh, your neck. Then it's very important the posterior thoracic nucleus, nucleus dorsalis of clot, Rex lamina 7. See here, Rex lamina 7. You can identify here. It's, uh, this is the point, and uh, it extends from C8 or L T1 to L3 in posterior part of the dorsal horn, homologous to the accessory cuneate nucleus of medulla. You must have identified this. Um, this is the nucleus dorsalis. Here it is, right? Nucleus dorsalis. So, which is Rex lamina 7. Here you see, this is the Rex lamina. This is labeled 7. So, homologous to the accessory cuneate nucleus of medulla and mold in unconscious proprioception from muscle spindles and Golgi tendon organs, dorsal spino cerebellar tract originates here. Then another nucleus, visceral afferent, also present in the same lamina, Rex lamina 7, is poorly defined and extent is from T1 or to L2 and S2 to S4 spinal segment. Situated in the base of the dorsal horn and lateral to the dorsal nucleus and dorsal to the lateral gray column. Right, so see its location. We just identify, I think we have to enlarge the small nucleus. So let's get you know, it's enlarged, right? So this is, uh, you know, the nucleus um, um, proprius, and this is the nucleus dorsalis, and just the lateral to that is the that nucleus of our uh, next uh, visceral aspect, right? Not uh, been, uh, shown over here, but this is the lateral to its uh, um, this visceral after nucleus, right? The base of the dorsal horn, which is the Rex lamina 7. You also identify here, a bit focus, focus on it. Yes, please. You will just so see this is see, lamina 7 over here, right? So this is the nucleus dorsalis and the lamina 7 and lateral to that is the nucleus dorsalis lateral to that is the visceral afferent nucleus not um, labeled over here then the lateral gray column cells right so the two types of cells and uh, this, uh, this is smaller anterior uh, than the anterior gray column cells lateral gray column cells rex lamina 7 and 10 so uh, Exons of these cells pass in the ventral nerve root and the constitute preganglionic sympathetic fiber in the trachoma region and preganglionic parasympathetic fiber in the region in the sacral region. Then is the lateral gray column cells are the continued the Rex lamina seven and ten and uh, this stand is included in the lateral gray column because from this gray commission they extend into this lateral column, right? So contains the intermedial lateral, right? And the intermedio medial, intermedio medial, and the intermedio lateral root. So, what is intermedio lateral? You can see this label over here. This is the intermedio lateral, and this is the intermedio medial nucleus. So, two nuclei. So, intermedio lateral is the visceromotor nucleus, extends from T1 to L3. It contains the intermedio medial nucleus, so the column of visceromotor nucleus that extends from T1 to L3. So intermedio medial extends from T1 to L3 and intermedio lateral extends from T1 to L3. Same extent. So it contains preganglionic or motor sympathetic neuron, which is a general visceral efferent. It contains a T1 to T2, the ciliospinal center of pudge, which is a sympathetic innervation of the eye. So then the Dex lemony 10. This was the you know gray commissure. This is a gray, but it's gray commissure is a thin transverse strip of gray matter that surrounds the central canal. And along with the junior white commissure, serves to connect the two smithal half of the cord. Right? This is the point. This connection, this is a uh, gray commissure, and it con connects the two smithal half of the cord. So this is the lamina 10, the next uh, classification. This is the lamina 10. This is the lamina 10 labeled over here. You see, this is the lamina 10. Again, I enlarge uh, the same picture. It's not pasted over here separately. Let me enlarge you just for that. You see over here, let's enlarge. Yes, yes, yes. 
So this is the labeling, right? This is the lamina, uh, you know, uh, 10. And this is the substantia gelatinosa centralis, right? So this is the ventral horns. And this is, we're talking about the, uh, you know, dorsal horns. So this was the lamina 1, which is the, uh, you know, postomarginal nucleus. Then the lamina 2, substantia gelatinosa. And then the nucleus proprius, lamina 3 and uh, 4. And the nucleus dorsalis. Right, this is the dorsalis here, and uh, also the nucleus proprius. These are the two nuclei. This is the nucleus proprius, right? And this is the nucleus dorsalis, and the lateral to that would be the not um, mark. And this is the visceral afferent nucleus, right? So these are the intermedial medial and intermedial lateral nuclei. So this was discussed so far. So and also this is in the anterior gray column I discussed with you in detail, right? These are the medial group, the central and the lateral, all the various like the phrenic and the accessory and everything which you have discussed. And uh, it's a beautiful, I made it for you especially. Uh, this is a nuclei present in the gray column, right? This is sort of thirteen nuclei and the extent, right? And you can obviously correlate these uh, nuclei where these are present in the next lemony I told you already. So, nuclei present in the gray column and the postromarginal nucleus, the substantia gelatinosa, nucleus proprius, diffuse spinal reticular nucleus, interneurons for spinal reflexes, central cervical nucleus, Clark's column, intermediate medial, intermediate lateral. These two are present in the lateral horn. The Cooper Shrington border cells, interneurons for motor neurons, motor neurons, alpha and gamma, and the central gray nucleus. Right? These are the various types of the nuclei in the gray column and their extent already told you in each and every slide separately so this was a I mean, uh, discussion uh, uh, with you about the structure of the spinal cord mentioning all the important nuclei first i told you the section section and then it's uh, parts various various horns and then what is present in the these horns with the various nuclei told you 30 nuclei and then the rest lemony, the 10 lemony, what is present in each lemony and how they were uh, they discovered by the uh, Mr. Rex, uh, scientist, which was the scientist from Sweden. So with this, I thank you very much for listening and very uh, soon I will be uploading another video, which would be the white matter structure and then is the characterization of the spinal cord levels. Please uh, subscribe my channel, channel, subscribe it and uh, comment down below uh, so i could uh, get the feedback and uh, uh, keep on uh, improving still further so till then it's goodbye and stay in tune uh, do press the bell icon